following on from the previous video, we got to um, we got to this stage here, and because we're looking at this function, we can we can we can actually say that uh, that this thing here equals this. Um, so now we need to look at convergence. So one way of interpreting convergence is this: if you um, if you let's say if you truncate this and ignore everything beyond this, so at the moment this thing here is approximately this thing here. Now for you to search for convergence, it's really you searching for values of x for which this whole thing here, as you head towards infinity, as you head towards infinity, this whole thing here will map exactly on top of this thing here. So that's what it means for you. Uh, to, that's how you can interpret convergence in this case. Um, so, so, so when you search for convergence, it's really you searching for values of x for which this whole thing here, this whole thing here, all the way to infinity, will map, will be exactly where where you can be 100% sure that this whole thing here will be exactly equal to this thing here. So that's what it means. Uh, that's how you can interpret convergence. So now we uh, let so let's let's search for convergence here. So uh, let's 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 just uh, because this is a definite number. Let's just look at this. If this whole thing here all the way to infinity, if this whole thing here converge, then then when you add one, it will converge. So uh, so so now we really need to determine if this will converge or if this will diverge. So to do that, we would use the ratio test. So using the ratio test on this bit. When it when it comes to the ratio test, we've done this many times. You always get a n plus one divided by a n. Well, this is your a n plus one because um, uh, where wherever you see an n, you're going to have n plus one. So that's uh, that's this thing here, and then this will be n plus one, n plus one factorial, and then uh, and then if you look at this here, if you insert this n plus one into this n here, so that will be k minus n minus 1 plus 1 that would then give you this thing here well well this whole thing here is your your a n plus 1 divided by a n is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of a n which will then be this so now it's just a matter of tidying this up so hang on so um so if you look at this here this whole thing here and let me think uh this whole thing here Will cancel out with this whole thing here, so uh, so these will cancel out. So that will then take you to to here, and then, and then, and then let me think, and then and then break this up as being one block multiplying another block, and then uh, break this up as being one block multiplying another block, and then this these two will cancel out, these two will cancel out, giving you giving you this. And then, and then, and then let me think. And then, uh, and then the you taking the absolute of the whole thing is really the same as you taking the absolute of this, taking the absolute of this, taking the absolute of this. So that will then take you to here. So let's uh, let's just move this out here. So that will then give you this. Now n, if, if you look at this here, n is um, n is always positive. So so you you don't really need the absolute here. Whereas whereas k if you think about it, we we were looking at k k could be negative because uh, we we were looking at this here. We we were looking at this. So k could be. Remember, we said in the previous video, k could be anything on the real number line. So k could be negative. So going back to here, going back to here, going uh, going back to here. Um. So 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 with this one with this one here, you don't need. Um, you don't need the absolutes here because n is always positive, but you do need the absolutes here because k could be negative. So you you have to maintain this uh, this absolute sign here, but you don't need the absolutes here. So let's move this out. That will then take you to here. So now use a trick that we've always used in the past. Um, if if as n heads towards infinity, if you look at this, um, let's divide uh, divide everything. Well, just just looking at this fraction here. Let's divide everything by uh, by uh, by by n. So so looking at this, this divided by n. So that will then give you this, and then uh, n minus n divided by n. So n divided by n, and then uh, and then yeah, and then this thing here uh, divided by n. That will then give you this. Divided this by by n. That will then give you this. 
So uh, this remains the same. So as n heads towards infinity, um, as n heads towards infinity, uh, k is a, a finite number. Once uh, k, k is fixed, and then as n heads towards infinity, then uh, then this is going to head towards uh, towards zero, and then you've got zero take away one, so that would be negative one, and then this will be one, and then this will be zero. So uh, so the absolute of negative one is one. So this whole thing here will be will be one. So so as n heads towards infinity, then this whole thing here will be will be one. So uh, so so uh, so so that value there will will eat that um, lim a n plus one over a n absolute equals this thing here. So remember when it comes to the ratio test, if uh, if if that if if this thing here is less than one, then we know we're going to have conversions. So for conversions, we require the absolute to be less than one. So so after all that, if 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 you um if if the absolute value is less than one. Then we can be 100% sure that it's going to converge. So what that means is this. What that means is this. Um, what that means is, uh, remember, for convergence, we've just discovered that uh, absolute uh, value of x must be strictly less than one. So what that means is, if um, no, no, no matter what k is, k could be anything. But if if this value here, if this x here, if this x here, if the modulus of that is less than one, then you can be sure. That this whole thing here, as you head towards infinity, will be exactly will be one hundred percent. You can be one hundred percent sure that this whole thing here will, will be exactly equal to this thing here. So be, because we know that anything, so this is x here. If if x is uh, is is in between negative one and one, then then anything if anything in in between in between this uh, anything in this interval, we can be sure that this whole thing here. Will be precisely equal to to this thing here. Okay, so so now now we know that um, that anything in between here is going to converge. Okay.